Most of us have dreamed of a life at sea, even though in reality we know it'd be less Pirates of the Caribbean and more Captain Ron. But while the seafaring life is only a fantasy for some people, lots of people do it. Some are born into the life, while others pay ridiculous amounts of money just to leave the land behind. Here are some groups of people who live most of their lives at sea. Offshore refugees The Bajau people of Malaysia live their entire lives at sea, and not on massive ships either. They live in huts on stilts and small houseboats. But while living on crystal clear waters in the tropics might sound like a dream come true, there's a dark side. According to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, the Bajau are refugees, and the Malaysian government has forbidden them from living on land. The people go to shore only to trade goods, and the kids don't attend school. It probably won't surprise you to hear that the Baojiao are insanely good at fishing, since most of them do it for a living. In some places, though, the younger generation is choosing to leave the sea in pursuit of better opportunities on land. Honestly, it seems like there could be an opportunity right there on the water. Tourists would probably pay a fortune to spend the night at one of those huts if it was listed on Airbnb. The never-ending cruise a lot of people sell their old homes after retirement so they can buy an RV and travel the world. But people who really know how to retire in style do it on a cruise ship, where someone else does all the driving. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, look out the window, and hope you don't fall off. Took a hard, hard, violent fall, kind of pinballed down, hit a lot of railings, broke a lot of According to U.S. News & World Report, some retirees are choosing to leave land permanently and book back-to-back -back cruises that sometimes have them at sea for years at a time. Before you get too excited about the idea, though, keep in mind that it'll take a hefty chunk out of your savings. One retiree estimated her expenses at $165,000 for the entire year. That'll eat through your Social Security check pretty fast. See Nomads Lifelong seafarers are surprisingly common in the waters of Asia, although that way of life is starting to lose out to the comforts of the modern world, especially among the younger generations. The Makan people of Myanmar live their lives almost entirely in large canoes or in huts right along the water's edge. But even for these very traditional people, that way of living is becoming less and less practical. Makan families live in a mother boat and usually tow a couple of smaller boats behind them. Like the Bajau, the Makan are subsistence fishers, but modern Makan people have to share their traditional waters with commercial fishing operations and tourists. Many of them are abandoning their old ways of life simply because living on land is easier. A sad but familiar story. High Seas Shipping not everybody who lives at sea most of their life is a nomad or a cruise ship retiree. Some people hit the open waters just because it's their job, like cargo ship crews, who spend way more time on water than on land. Cargo ship crews might spend up to nine months at sea, so forget playing golf on the weekends or watching your kids hit their milestones. If you're lucky enough to become an officer, you might only have to be at sea for five months at a time, though. And if you make captain, you get to shout orders at everyone. Sir? I know this may finish me as an acting ensign, but shut up, Wesley! It doesn't get any better than that. Fish life. If nine months seems a little too long, you could go for the shorter eight-month season of the Barramundi fisherman. It's not a particularly rewarding job, though. One enthusiastic captain describes his boat as a 50-foot prison cell. According to Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Australia's Barramundi fishing season begins in February and ends in October, and it's back-breaking work. Crew members put the nets out and haul them back in again. Then they have to sort, fillet, and freeze everything they catch. There are plenty of dangers involved. Box jellyfish often wind up in the nets and can deliver a painful, sometimes deadly sting. And if you're super lucky, you could also get attacked by crocodiles, which will make a great story of romance and adventure. Well, maybe not romance exactly, but adventure if you survive. Offshore Oil Offshore oil rigs gained some notoriety after the Deepwater Horizon accident of 2010, which took the lives of 11 people and dumped more than 4 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. And that was definitely not the world's first oil rig disaster. So anyone who decides to pursue a career opportunity on an offshore oil rig has to keep the mortal peril in the back of their mind. But that's not the only challenge with living out at sea on one of these massive structures. CBS describes work on offshore oil rigs as a noisy, grimy, cramped existence, with 12-hour workdays and living quarters that are part barracks, part locker room. The good news is, you're not stuck out there for months at a time. Many rigs have a two weeks on, two weeks off work schedule, though you can always work extra hours if you can't stand being away. Deployment 
Not everyone who joins a seafaring branch of the military ends up spending months at sea, but it's definitely not uncommon. The 13th Marine Expeditionary Unit, for example, is often deployed for seven months at a time. Marines aboard the amphibious assault ship Boxer spend their time helping out refugees adrift in the water, training with U.S. partners, and visiting more than half a dozen different countries. Navy deployments can be similar in length. According to The Balance, if you're assigned to a ship, you'll spend three years bouncing between ship and shore, and will spend between six and nine months at a time out on the water. Life aboard a Navy vessel is also kind of cramped, but the perks are at least superior to getting stung by a jellyfish, attacked by crocodiles, and exploding. Sailors have access to a recreation room where they can play games or watch television, though the official materials don't mention whether HBO and Showtime are included. Under the Sea Nuclear submarines are a type of military vessel, but the living conditions are markedly different from the conditions on an aircraft carrier or battleship. For a start, according to The Guardian, you should try not to use the bathroom when a submarine is diving because the submarine's shape warps slightly as it descends, and you might not be able to open the door again. So apart from that fun little detail, what else is there to love about life on a nuclear submarine? Well, there are the months at sea. A surveillance mission might last six months at a time. For the entire trip, you'll be elbow to elbow with fellow submarines mariners. You'll get to climb a lot of ladders, and you'll also get to accidentally bang your head on stuff all the time. Also, there's the part where you're basically living on top of a nuclear reactor. More adventure on the high seas, right? Sailing the Seas of Money Not everybody who retires at sea takes the cruise ship route. After all, where's the fun in having all your meals cooked for you, your room cleaned every day, and free entertainment whenever you feel like it? That's why some people have made the decision to cut their ties with the land and head to sea on their own personal ship. But just because they don't get a water slide doesn't mean these fledgling sailors get off cheap. A 50-foot yacht with all the comforts of home runs about $1 million. Can't afford that? Don't worry, you can rough it in a smaller yacht for just $250,000, or the equivalent of about 18 months of full-time living on a cruise ship. The amount of time you spend at sea is is, of course, totally up to you. But in the absence of an actual home, you'll be sleeping on board even if you're sitting in a marina somewhere. According to Coastal Living, loads of seriously wealthy people are deciding to retire this way. Saving the world Many people choose a life at sea not because of the glamour or adventure, but because they genuinely love the ocean. Research vessels are one way some people turn their love of the sea into an occupation. As a bonus, you also get to do some good for the world. According to the University of New Hampshire, the crew of a research vessel might spend eight months of the year at sea. Crew members won't get to do a whole lot of actual research, but they do get to visit some pretty cool locations. The crew of the Atlantis research vessel, for example, has visited underwater volcanoes and hydrothermal vents, which sounds way more meaningful than filleting fish, or getting eaten by fish. Thanks for watching! Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel! Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!